Hi, I'm Jim Klein, Peter LSU beat writer for NOLA.com, the Times Picayune. I'm with columnist Ron Higgins. Uh, both of us have seen a lot of LSU Ole Miss games. Uh, a 10 to 7 victory for LSU uh, knocks off unbeaten uh, number three ranked Ole Miss uh, by a 1960s score. Like this is like how they used to play yeah. uh, back when um, LSU was messing things up for Ole Miss and they were going back and forth and beating each other. Uh, a, a defensive battle. Uh, LSU uh, uh, shot itself in the foot all night and finally came through with a a, a 95 yard game winning drive. It just just so much improbability tonight. It was it, it was crazy. But this this defense uh, this um, victory goes to the LSU defense. Well, it goes to the LSU defense absolutely. I mean they they. They stonewalled Ole Miss all night, and, and basically so LSU's been you – know, they had to overcome four turnovers. Mm. And the defense had to keep hanging on through four turnovers, two fumbles in the first half, one in the shadow of the goal line by Leonard Fournette went in the end zone. Uh, second half, two inexplicable interceptions thrown by Anthony Jennings at a time where you wonder why they were doing throwing the ball. Uh, but still, they hung in uh, 95 yards, 12 straight running plays – and then the stunner of the year, they throw the game with a touchdown pass to the tight end. Mm-hmm. To the tight end. Unbelievable. I mean, I mean, Logan Stokes makes the catch. I think probably the only people in the city more shocked than I mean, his parents were probably old Mrs. Defense. You know, just that's how crazy it was. But and then the end, uh, you know, Ole Miss decides not to go for the field goal. Well, goes and, and the play was set up to, to either throw short or throw out of bounds. He but while well, tries to make the big play. Rollamar intercepts, and LSU fans go home happy drinking, and Ole Miss fans go back to their car angry. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and, and like I said, uh, uh, one for the defense tonight. They gave up some big plays early in the game, but they, they settled down, and they corral Bo Wallace, who has had great games against LSU in the past, 656 yards passing in the previous two games. And there's always this talk about the good bow and the bad bow, and it was the bad bow tonight that showed up, and, and one that, that LSU has not seen. And then LSU's uh, uh, running game, uh, it's just incredible tonight. The number six rushing defense in the country came in averaging only 97, giving up 97 yards a game. And LSU really took it to them. And then it looked like in the second half they, they got away from the running game but then came back to it at the end, 12 straight running plays, big night for Leonard Fournette. Yeah, he was over 100, Terrence McGee in the 60s or 70s. LSU ran the ball 55 times. <laughs> we'll give you an idea. You know, and I, and I talked to Hughes Freeze this morning, and you know he knew what LSU was going to do. Their team knew they knew what LSU was going to do, and LSU went and did it anyway. And impressed by the running backs, impressed by the offensive line. Mm-hmm. It's more impressed with the fact that Ole Miss has two complete sets of defensive line, and they have depth now. And they ran both of them in there. LSU basically went with the starters the whole game on the offensive line, and they were tremendous from beginning to end. Well, that's it, that's it. Uh, and uh, LSU goes into an open date uh, on, on quite a roll, three straight SEC victories. They get a, uh, an extra week to prepare for Alabama, and uh, who knows where this season can go now. The season that, that was looking kind of bad there uh, after those first two losses. So, uh, but, but stay with us on NOLA.com and, uh, uh, and see how LSU season developed. And for, for Ron Higgins, I'm Jim Kleinpeter, and we'll see you on NOLA.com.